Ableton Live's browser is much more useful and powerful than you probably think. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you everything there is to know about the browser so you can use it to its fullest potential. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm gonna show you one of the best features of the browser and how you can use it to really amp up your workflow. So first up, what is the browser? Well, the browser is one of the main sections inside of the Ableton Live window, and it gives you quick access to things like plugins, devices, audio files, MIDI files, grooves, and other things that you can load up inside of a live session. The browser is broken up into two main different sections. The sidebar shows us all the different sections and categories that we can browse through, and the content pane shows us all of the content within these sections. For example, I could go to the instruments label and find all the different instruments that I can load up inside of Ableton Live that are native to the program. Once we've found whatever it is we want to use in our session, say this wavetable device here, we can either double click it to load it up or click and drag it into our session, arrangement or device view to load it up depending on what type of file it is. So first, let's go through the sidebar. As we can see, the sidebar is broken up into three main sections. We have collections, categories, and places. Let's go over the category section first. The category section allows us to view all of the files stored inside of Ableton Live's library by type. The sounds category gives us access to a bunch of different presets of instruments and racks inside of Ableton Live. The drums category gives us access to all of our installed drum rack presets, as well as individual drum hit sounds as audio files. The instruments category gives us access to all of the raw Ableton Live instruments as devices, and we can see all of the presets that we have installed created using these instruments as well. The audio effects category allows us to see all of the native audio effects installed inside of Ableton Live. The MIDI effects category gives us access to all the different native MIDI effects installed in Ableton Live. The Max for Live category gives you access to all of your installed Max for Live devices inside of the Ableton Live library. The plugins category allows you to access all of your installed third-party plugins. The clips category gives you access to all of your installed Ableton Live clips, which are a special type of file that we'll go through later. The samples category category gives you access to every single audio file that you have installed inside of Ableton Live's library. The grooves category gives you access to all of the different grooves that you have installed. And the template section allows you to access all of the template live sets that either come with Ableton Live or that you've created yourself. We can actually edit what categories are visible in the sidebar by hovering our mouse over the categories header, clicking on the edit icon, and then selecting or deselecting all the different categories as we want. The places section in our sidebar allows us to access specific places or folders in our computer and see the files contained within them that that Ableton Live can open. The pack section allows us to see all of the official Ableton Live packs that we have installed. The cloud section is for use with Ableton Cloud, which is used with the Ableton Note app. The user library is the default location for any new devices or presets that we create and save ourselves. The current project allows you to access all the different files contained within the current project folder. And then from here, you can add your own folders to this section as you like. You can add your own folder in one of two different ways. First, you can simply click on the add folder link and navigate to the folder that you want to load up and then that will add it as a folder in the places section. Or you can simply click and drag a folder from your computer's file viewer into this section as well. Just be careful not to add really large files or folders here, like for example, your computer's whole hard drive, because Live will try to scan through the entire folder. And if it's really large and contains a lot of files, it may take a while and slow down your system. Once you've added a folder to the places section, you can simply remove it by right clicking on the folder and removing it from the sidebar. The collection section is a place where we can view any file or folder that we've tagged inside of Ableton Live's browser. And it's a really quick and easy way to access a specific set of files, folders, and or devices. To tag a file in our browser, all we need to do is navigate to that file. For instance, we could go to instruments and go to wavetable right here, right click on the file and select the tag. I'm gonna select number one. When you tag a file, device, or folder, you'll notice that a little colored square shows up next to it on the right-hand side in the content pane, which shows us that it is tagged and available to view in our collections. Then we can navigate up to our collection and we can see the file, folder, or device that we've tagged in that collection. We actually have seven different possible collections that we can view inside of our browser. To access these seven different collections, we can simply go and hover over the collections header, click on the edit icon, and tick the collections that we want to view. We can also rename our collections so that they make more sense to us. For example, I could rename this orange collection here to plugins. Now I can go to a plugin, right click that plugin, and tag it with the orange tag, and now it'll show up in our plugins collection. When navigating through the content pane, you'll see a few different icons show up next to different files, folders, and devices. Each of these different icons represent different file or device types. For example, if we go to the instruments category, we'll see these little icons right here that look like a rounded rectangle with a solid bar up the top. This device icon is actually used for Ableton Live native instruments, audio effects, and MIDI effects. So the only way to know what type of device it is, is to actually load it up onto a track. Let's take a look at some of the other icons we can see in our browser by going to the packs section in our sidebar. So let's go to our packs section and under our packs section, you'll immediately see a different type of icon. This icon with four stacked rectangles right here denotes an Ableton Live pack. 
pack. A pack is an official Ableton Live sound library, which could include things like audio files, MIDI files, device presets, Max for Live devices, and even entire Ableton Live sessions. If we open up one of these packs, we then get to see another icon, which is the folder icon. The folder icon is simply a way to show us a group of files collected inside of a folder. We can unfold a folder by clicking on the arrow on the left-hand side of it, and here we can see another type of icon. This rectangle with a bunch of vertical lines in it denotes an audio file. And if we see this little tick next to it in the bottom right-hand corner, that means that Ableton Live has actually analyzed this file and created a .asd or an analysis file, which means that Ableton Live has already analyzed the file in terms of its tempo, waveform, etc. And that that file will then load up quicker into our session. If we navigate to the clip section in our categories, we get to see the Ableton Live clip icon. And there are actually two different types of clip icons. The icon with the playhead in the left and the horizontal lines in the right denotes a MIDI clip. And the icon with the playhead in the left and the vertical lines in the right denotes an audio clip. A clip file is a type of file that contains MIDI and or audio information, as well as track information, including things like devices loaded up onto that track, volume settings, etc. And they're a really great type of file to use if you like starting with templates and presets. If we navigate to our grooves section, we can see the Ableton Live groove icon. This icon is denoted by a rectangle with a kind of triangle waveform in the center of it. A groove file allows us to apply some kind of rhythmic shift to either an audio or a MIDI file without actually changing the parameters of that MIDI or audio file. Here I am in the pack section, I've opened up another pack and here we can see another type of icon. This little square with a musical note in the center of it denotes a MIDI file. A MIDI file is a file that contains only MIDI data and no audio information. They're really small and they're basically used for transferring musical information between programs. Finally, if we go to our sounds category and open up one of these sections right here, we can see two different types of icons. The one with the single rectangle down the bottom and the hollow rectangle up the top is a preset file for a single device. For example, if I load up this device right here, it'll load up a single device for me. However, the icon with the divided rectangle down the bottom is actually an Ableton Live rack file. If you don't know what racks are, I did a video recently, which I'll link via a card above that tells you everything you need to know about racks. But essentially, a rack is a collection of different devices that are housed within a single device. For example, if I load up this first rack right here, we can see that it's actually multiple devices contained within a single device that gives us access to a bunch of different controls over the devices contained within that rack. Using the content pane, we can also actually view other Ableton Live sessions and sets and load up the entire set or individual tracks or even devices from that set within our current session. For example, let's go to the templates category and here we can see another Ableton Live browser icon, which is the Ableton Ableton Live set icon. This is an entire Ableton Live session file that we can view the contents of by clicking on the arrow on the left-hand side. If we go to the demo and sketch session right here, open up its contents, we can see all the different tracks contained within this individual live set. We can see MIDI tracks and audio tracks. We can actually load up one of these tracks into our session by simply clicking and dragging this track into our session, and that will load up the track with any devices, clips, and even automation into our session. We can even unfold the track and get access to individual clips and devices that are contained on that track and load them up into our session as well. You can even load up the entirety of that live set into your current set by simply clicking and dragging on the entire .als file and dropping it into your session. And if I switch back to the session view, you'll see that we have a bunch of clips already on these tracks. We can actually organize our content pane to help us easier navigate each of the different sections inside of our browser and see certain information about each of the different files in the content pane. For example, if we go to our user library, and right click up the top where it says name, we can organize all these different files contained within our user library by certain information about those files. We can choose to add a column that sorts by size. And now if I unfold one of these folders right here, we can see the file size of the different files contained within that folder. We also get the ability to organize by date modified, type, rank, and place. Date modified shows us the date that that file or folder was last modified. Type shows us the type of file that that file is. For example, this audio file here is a wave. Rank shows us how often we use particular devices and their ranking in our own sessions. And place shows us the place in our browser where those files are stored. For example, all these different folders here are in our user library. These different columns are actually activated per label. So for instance, I could go into my instruments category and organize these by rank and I can go into my samples category and organize these by size. And those columns will now stay linked to those different categories. Organizing the browser in this way is a really great way to see perhaps what files are taking up the most space, as well as what different types of devices and files you use most often. One final trick is in the audio effects category section, where we can see all of our audio effects organized in different folders. And if we don't like this view, we can actually right click and untick group in folder. 
Now we get to see all of our different audio effects organized by either their name or a different kind of structure, for example, rank again, as we like. From the browser content pane, we can also get an audio preview of different audio files, MIDI files, clips, and instrument presets from official Ableton packs. For example, if I navigate to the samples category and click on any of these different audio files, we can preview what that file sounds like before we actually import it into our session. We can adjust the level of our playback using the Q control on our master track, which is located in the bottom right-hand corner of the arrangement view and in the bottom right-hand corner of our session view. In order to preview an audio file or other type of file in your browser, you need to make sure that this little headphone icon down the bottom left is turned blue. If this is turned off, you won't be able to preview any audio file or other type of file in your browser. As mentioned, you can also preview MIDI files, clips, and instrument presets from official Ableton packs, which you can often find in the different category sections in your browser. For example, I could go to the sounds category right here, click on any of these different files, and it will give me a preview of what that instrument sounds like when playing a single note. If our session is playing, audio, MIDI, and clip files are actually able to be previewed playing in time with our session, regardless of their original tempo. For example, here I have a drum loop playing. I can keep this drum loop playing and actually preview different loops over this drum loop to hear what they sound like. If you don't want to preview an audio file in time with your current playing session, you can simply click on this raw button down the bottom right hand corner of your browser. That will preview the audio file at its original tempo. Sometimes you might not see this raw option and that's because Ableton Live is not warping the clip in the background. This can often be adjusted in the preferences in the warping settings along with the algorithm that is used to warp the audio in this preview. If you're enjoying this video so far and wanna see more videos like this, please consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the like button and leaving a comment down below. It really does help me out. And if you're really enjoying this video, why not consider buying me a coffee by heading over to my buy me a coffee page where you can support me and get access to some really cool free things like Ableton Live racks, samples, and more. You'll find the link to that in the description below. And so even though Ableton Live's browser is already really easy to navigate, we can make our lives even easier by using the search feature, which allows us to search any category inside of Ableton Live's browser by file name. And this also includes folders that we've added manually. We can access the search function in two different ways. We can either go up to the search bar in the top and simply type in something like drums, and that will search for drums in our currently selected category in our sidebar. If we hit the escape key, we can stop searching. And we can also search the entirety of Ableton Live's browser by using the keyboard shortcut, which is Command and F on Mac or Control and F on Windows. For example, if I press Command and F on my keyboard, I can now search for drums and that will give me access to every single file name that contains drums inside of the entirety of Ableton Live's browser across all of the different categories. I can also use this feature to quickly add devices or instruments to a track. For example, let's say I wanted to add an EQ. I could simply press Command and F, type EQ, press the down arrow, and then when I have the device that I want selected, I can just press the enter key on my keyboard and that will load up the device onto the currently selected track. And there you can see just how much the search function can really improve your workflow in Ableton Live. And if you wanna learn about another really cool workflow tip, check out this video right here. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something and this video helped you out and I'll see you all in the next video.